Welcome back to ESPN's continuing live coverage of the CLR Carmen Salvino Scorpion Championship. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson with you on this Sunday. And time to take a look at this week's oil pattern. The lumber liquidators know the wood. They're rolling on the Scorpion, Randy. Yes, Rob, 42 feet in length. And this week, the center had a very predominant track area. A lot of friction there. As you can see, Brad Angelo is trying to play the outside part and getting right of that. Look for the big crankers, Kenny Samard, Wes Mallott, they're going to move in, and as the lanes transition, they're just going to keep moving farther and farther left. Once again, we want to remind you, no scorpions were harmed in the making of this oil pattern. Right you are, my friend. Excellent proper English, by the way, a little bit earlier. Well, thanks. The farther, farther, further, further debate, you nailed it. Well, thanks to Bill Vent. It's always important to have support. So here's Brad Angelo was in a deep hole through three frames. Jason Couch had a chance to really stomp on his throat. But Couch went spare open frame fourth, fifth, and now it's just eight pins separating the two. And with a strike here, Brad Angelo can take the lead. Strike he does. So a three-bagger for Angelo gives him the lead. And now we begin the seventh. Brad's going to take a re-rack here, and it's just amazing that, I, I don't know if, if you would call it a metamorphosis that has taken place with Brad Angelo from strictly a mental standpoint. Where he is now mentally when he performs in the championship rounds or the championship match on television as opposed to what used to happen to him. He just looks like a different guy when he's on TV. He says he put all those past defeats behind him. He's all right with it. He's, he's come to a resolution with it. And whatever happens, happens now on TV. No more worrying about it. No more stressful, sleepless nights. It's just get out, bowl, and enjoy yourself. Go ahead, Rob. Four bagger for Brad Angelo. Got a boy. You know that song they're playing? Help me out with it. <laughs> I can't. How did it go? I'm sorry, I can't go there. You're allowed. I haven't trademarked anything. Seven. Boy, he's making real good shots, too. He had that horrible break in the fifth frame where he left the pocket. 7-10 comes back with a strike, and this looks pretty good here as well. Only to leave a soft seven. Jason Kautz needs to start stringing some strikes to get back into this match. Boy, that fourth pin, tantalizingly close to dropping the seven. A win, lose, or draw for Jason Couch, so he's going to take away from this tournament the fact that he knows that he can still compete at this level. He'll have to, like we said earlier, bowl through pain from time to time. His knee will probably never be 100%, but he's so talented, I'm not so sure he's... I'm not so sure he can't beat people out here with a knee that's, say, 80 or 90%. He described this season to me yesterday as awful. Called his coach, Mark Baker, a couple weeks ago, and they talked about his swing, saying it was a little bit too steep, and told us, you know, I, I got to make my feet stay quick enough to accommodate my swing today. Uh, are his feet working properly? Well, it, yeah, and I, I think they are. I mean, he's just a little fast at times with his ball speed. But the point of that is to keep Jason Couch in time if his feet slow down, the ball's going to get to the bottom of the swing or to the release point too soon. By keeping his feet moving, he, he guarantees himself to stay ahead of the swing. And that's what basically allows him to apply hit and power to the bowling ball. Here's Brad Angelo up 14. Here's his effort in the eighth. He had a challenging Tuesday in the greater Chicago area. We'll tell you about that in a second. in a row for Angelo, starting to pull away. Yeah, and what a time to trip the four pin when you're working on four in a row and 
looking to really increase your lead. Trip four is the right-hander's best friend and a left-hander's worst enemy. Angelo drove into Chicago on Tuesday, stopped by at a friend's house, had dinner, came back downstairs to his car, broken into everything swiped but his pants and his bowling shirts, took all his suitcases, shattered the back passenger window, had it fixed the next day. I don't know what that was an omen for or not. Next week, the Cheetah Championship in Cheek to Waga. Live coverage here on ESPN. Angelo starting the foundation frame up 2 4. Mm -hmm. Five in a row. And now he leaves the 4 7. And this ball drifts just a pinch high. And what this does is it now gives Jason Couch a glimmer of hope. Jason Couch can strike out to shoot 224. Brad Angelo with a spare here. Strike spare in the 10th for 226. Jason Couch getting up in the 9th and 10th frame. Rob knows that to have any chance at all, he must strike out. And that attitude is just fine with Jason Couch. I asked him his style, and he this is his quote. Bro, bowling balls to the wall, full force, 110%, home run hitter, all or nothing. I'm not sure I could get any more cliches in there. My pen ran out of ink. But he does not mind stepping up in these situations and chucking it with venom. There's one down. He knew it as soon as he released it. And Rob, you're right. You know, some players, they shy away from having to get up in the 10th frame and throw strikes to win. Jason Couch is certainly not one of those players. He relishes getting up and having to strike out to win tournaments, win matches. This guy is really good. We've seen him in the 10th frame, the 9th and 10th frame on numerous occasions, rise to the occasion and throw nothing but strikes. Like he might have had a little balance issue there at the end and he fought through it. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. It looked like he got a little forward on that shot. And again, the stability being an issue with his right knee surgery, it's just not, the balance point isn't quite as uh, there like it used to be. And watch the lack of flexibility almost straight up and down. And look how close he came to fouling. Well, that was just an errant shot. You see how wide it was. Watch this right at the arrows, and at about 30 feet down the lane, it gets out to the one and a half board, and that's just a little bit too far left for Jason Couch. That's why he came up light. Brad Angelo, nine on the first shot. He's going to be a winner. Well, for Jason Couch. All he needs is good count, doesn't even need a mark. A split, a big split here would be disastrous for Brad Angelo. And again, he had an open frame in the second. No such thing there. Angelo gets the necessary nine. And he will move on to take on the number two seed, Ken Samard. Yeah, and even if he would have left the 4-9 there, he would have just needed one pin, and he would have still got past Jason Couch. So he will move on and take a shot at one of the most powerful right-handers on tour in Ken Samard. You're going to have fun watching Ken Samard bowl. He has probably the widest grip on the tour, if that, am I describing that correctly? Well, his span, yeah, he's got span. a giant hand. I mean, it looks like a mitt. And he's got almost a five and a half inch span. I threw uh, Wes Malott's ball today, just, just for kicks and giggles. And I, my hand was stretching just to get in there. 
And he's like, hey, try some arts. I'm like, really? How, you know, come on, it's the big nasties ball. How much bigger can it be? Whoa, boy. Well, I think I was holding on my fingernails. Yeah. He put his hand up to mine, and where my tips of my fingers were, his knuckles were bending over. I mean, man. Good week, Jason. Thank so, Brad Angelo, 225 to 212. He wins it. Still to come, our top 50 countdown continues, and soon-to-be Hall of Famer, that man, Norm Duke, joins us live. I have to